On this week's Xamarin Show, our good friend Matthew is back again. Matthew, what are you talking about? Uh, we're going to be showing off the latest and greatest features from Mfractor, an awesome tool for Visual Studio for Mac. Awesome. you got to get this, you got to see it, and you got to install it for Visual Studio for Mac, so tune in. Welcome back, everyone, to The Xamarin Show. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and today we're back for the second time, my good friend Matthew, to talk about MFractor, which is ridiculously awesome tools from Visual Studio for Mac, right? That's right. Yeah. So, Matthew, we had you on, what, a year ago? Yeah, about a year ago. So it was last February, and it's mm -hmm. now March the following year, yeah. so 2018. Yeah, so a little bit over a year yep. has passed, and you came on. And at that time, MFractor was kind of a newer product, correct? Yeah, so I'd been working on it for about two years at that point. Got it. Uh, but it had just kind of started to get some traction. Um, a year later now, we've commercialized it, making money off it, and it's, it's really leveled up in the past nice. year. So yeah. it's a very, very different beast to what it was one year ago. Nice. So that's why I wanted to have you back on, because I not only use it on a daily basis when I'm in VS for Mac, yep. uh, but essentially how I've kind of summarized it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is yep. MFractor is these essential tools for refactoring, IntelliSense, and just actually code editing in general that kind of yeah. layers on to what's built into VS for Mac. Yeah, so we basically want to take away the friction from mm -hmm. Xamarin development. Yeah. Yeah, just make it easier make for it you, easier. To, you to make apps. Like, yeah, I, and, and it's this great extension that you install, and I always, I always like to build tools on top of tools for things that kind of bug me. Because yep. I know the teams are hard working on stuff, but sometimes like, oh, this bugs me, this bugs me, and the team may get to it in two years or a year, yep. but yeah, I can just do it now. Yeah, right? and they're, they're on different priorities and different timelines, so. Yeah, and it's not yep. only just for Xamarin development. Last time we showed a lot of Xamarin forms, but it seems like you also have built in a lot of C-sharp features We have well. done a lot of C-sharp. So we've, one of the newer features we did was go to implementation. Mm. So if you have an interface, instead of doing uh, Command D to go to the interface, you do Option D, mm. and it will find implementations of the interface oh, cool. and jump straight to it. Nice. So that's, that was just one of the ones that we've added recently. Yeah. So I'm using that heaps, and I'm <laughs> loving it. So it seems like you're also then finding kind of some gaps of some things maybe that you love from Visual Studio 2017 yep. that are like, oh, these may make its way over, but I can just do it, and Rosalind's awesome. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we keep getting people asking for for the C sharp features, and I'm like, that wasn't what I was intending on doing when I started the product, but yeah. you just kind of go with the flow of it, so yeah. it's good. And that's what I kind of see more and more as Visual Studio for Mac grows to be more than just mobile development, Azure development, functions, Unity development. Yep. You have a lot more developers using it for all sorts of different types of apps. Which yeah. Is cool. yeah, and I'm really keen at some point to start doing Unity tooling. I've mm -hmm. got a couple of trends in game dev, and they're like, we love what you're doing, but we need that for Unity. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I had JB on uh, talking about Unity. I'll put that in the show notes too for using Visual Studio for Mac. It's a really great integration. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, let's talk about MFractor. What's new? What's hot? What's going on? Cool. So, I wanted to sum like just go through and summarize the past year and sure. what we've done. Uh, so, when I was on last year, we kind of had a functional product mm -hmm. and it just did the, or well, compared to now, I would say it's the bare minimum for what you needed. But since then, we've done quite a lot of upgrades. So uh, we expanded out our code action suite. Mm -hmm. So we started last year, we barely had any. Now we've got about 50 uh, code actions and refactorings for Xamarin Forms and C Sharp. Oh, cool. Uh, July, we added our image importing wizard. Oh, cool. What does that mean? So say you've got some image that a designer's given you. Mm -hmm. It's a big 2,000 by 2,000 image. Yep. You need to get, get that into the app at 500. Yep. Uh, at different resolutions. So mm -hmm. iOS has at one, at two, two. at three X. Yeah. Android has X. All of them. Too many to speak of. Yep. So the process of getting that into the app is a pain. Got it, yeah. So what the image wizard and MPractor does, you go, I want to get that image in. You point it to it, it grabs it, you can re resize it and say the top level image should be now 1,000 by 1,000. Got it. And then it generates all the, sm all the smaller sizes. Oh, cool. Yeah, so like it takes that, that process of like it can easily be 15, 20 minutes yeah. to maybe 30 seconds. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'm used to going in and finding and scaling things by hand or going to Android Asset Studio, yep. and then I got to drag them in and I got to do the whole thing. It just, it's my, all my brain works, you know, but now I just click a button. Yeah, so I'll, I'll show you that a bit, little bit later, cool. but it's a, it's a huge time saver, nice. and I'd like to think that we've saved some people's sanity <laughs> from it with it. So uh, 
We had a localization wizard. Oh, nice. That's so super exciting. So when you're adding multi-language multi -language support to your app, often it's retrospectively. Mm -hmm. So your app's done really well. You've only built it in English. And let's be honest, we like, you know, we should be good developers. We should do it from the start. That's hard. But, but yeah. it, it's work, right? And it's yeah. often not the priority. So Sometimes we, you just got to ship code. Yeah, yeah. Like, you need to make money at the end of the day. And yeah. if Chinese isn't the language that's going to make you money, then you would, yeah. You're just not going to support it. But you may want to someday, yeah. so you get yeah. tools to help out. Yeah, so we made it really, really easy to retrofit nice. multi-language support. Um, we'll show you that a little bit later as awesome. well. We had a lot of feedback last year that Emperor wasn't really generating the code that people wanted in the mm -hmm. right spots. Uh, so we were opting for same defaults at the time. So we were making assumptions that people were using things like Fodi. Uh, so yeah. just having a, like a, a public property for a view model with a getter and a setter. A lot of people don't do that. Yeah. <clears throat> they'll trigger their own property changed events. They'll have code they want to inject. Um, so we added code snippet support. Oh, nice. So basically across the board now, uh, everything in Infractor is customized. Oh, cool. So we've got our own snippets that power it, but if you want to you know, kick those out and bring your own ones in, it's pretty simple to do that now. That's nice. Yeah, I'm pretty, uh, I, I, I don't use anything. I'm a big fan of not using anything not in the box. Yeah. Um, Myself, so like using any compiler stuff, like it blows my mind. I think it's so cool, but I'm like, ah, I don't, I'm not for me. Yep. But I do have my own little MVVM helpers framework, yep. which my getter and setter essentially boils down to a, a very simple line of code to say set property. It does a bunch yeah. of stuff. So you're saying I can customize that? Yeah. So oh, now, now, now instead of Infractor generating like public oh, string right. message with get and a set, it will be public string message get return some a backing field and set. Oh. We'll do a set property with like value, ref, storage, and yeah. then the property name. All that stuff. Yeah. So you're kind of listening to all of your users and developers yeah. and getting that feedback and integrating. Yeah. Nice. And I'll be perfectly honest. A lot of the users that like, the ideas that our users have, they're better than the stuff that we come up with <laughs> in, internally. So yeah. it makes sense for us to listen to them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and the last big feature we did that we shipped in actually started January, so it's been about two months in the wild now. Uh, we rebuilt the XAML IntelliSense editor. Oh, cool. So nice. we, it was something that we we're holding off doing. We weren't quite sure what the engineering cost would be. Mm. And then over Christmas, I was like, well, I've got some time now. And, Crush you know, it. Yeah. Yeah, just knocked it out. And I was like, that actually came together pretty easily. And I, I think the only reason it came together so quickly was because you had almost three years of infrastructure built up. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we've added probably like a two, three dozen All improvements yeah. over the existing stuff. And then we had a heap of Infractor specific code actions that we could tie into the IntelliSense menu. Oh, cool. So I'll show you that a little bit later. There's some, yeah. there's some cool stuff. Yeah. Do you want to jump yeah. into it? Jump into some yeah. demo stuff? Let's do it. Cool. Um, so I've got a, a basic demo app. So this is a login screen. Okay. Uh, we want to keep expanding this out. So we want to have our application logo in the top section. And we'll make our own custom progress button as well that has a little spinner. Sure. Uh, probably won't get all the way to the spinner, but we're just going to demonstrate some stuff. Okay. Um, so first of all, let's import our image in. So yeah, I see in here we have like an image with height. It's blank. Yep. Of entry fields, but yeah, there's nothing in that image. That's right. Yeah. So the old way of doing things would be we would go through and go droid resources, sure, so. add. Add files. files, it kills me. Yeah. But it's important that these files exist in these folders yeah. because a lot of people are like, I'm just going to shove it in an embedded resource. Like, no, no, no. I, yeah. I like, I'm, I'm very partial to the sizes and the scaling. Yep. And so you, when you, someone <coughs> boots up that iPad Pro that has yeah. a crazy resolution, it, it's going to look great. You know? Yeah, and ultimately, like you're building a product for an end user, not to make it. It shouldn't be just because it's simple for you doesn't mean that it's the right way of doing things. Yeah. So you do need to support this because you're giving it to someone at the end of the day. Got it. Um, yeah. So the old way is to put it into these resource folders. Yep. Um, th the idea of it doing it by hand now it it, it physically hurts me a little yeah. bit. So <laughs> let's not do that. Uh, we did. So we introduced the image wizard. So okay. you can go to tools and then Im import image wizard. Oh, cool. And this is our our guy that can do it. So you would go through and choose your image. So logo.png, you choose the projects that it goes into. And you can see here, actually, that it's really big. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's huge. It's a 1187 by 1,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you can choose 
the projects that it goes into. Yep. I'm just trying to get that. Uh, projects, which one do you want to select? What type of resource it is? Mm -hmm. um, so, bundle resource, we're doing asset catalog support at the moment. Oh, cool. Um, drawable or mipmap. Uh, the top level image density you want. So, that's kind of the baseline. Like this, yeah. so you're, if I set this to 500 by 500, that's the maximum. Essentially. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're at 3x, it would be 500 by 500. Perfect, that makes sense. Yep. And then often designers, bless their souls, they give you an image, mm -hmm. but it's not the right size to start with. Yeah. So you need to downsize and then downsize again. Yeah. So often you'll want to immediately reset the size. Mm -hmm. So if you, you can reset it, say, to 600. Got it. And then our at 3x will be 600, and okay. it will keep going down. Okay. So that's cool, but I'm actually going to import it through this just yet. Okay, so this is one way of doing it. Yeah. Got so it. the way that I'm preferring to do things now is through IntelliSense. Oh, okay. Yeah, it makes so sense. So we've added a inline code action for this. So if you do source equals, uh, there's, this ah. there's this lovely, ooh, that's interesting. There's this lovely code action here called uh, import image asset. And if you double click on that, it opens up the same window. Oh, so it means it. you can be hacking away, hacking away, hacking away. Don't gotta go find the magical drop down. Yep. Nice. So like the whole thing of this is to just kill the friction for, for doing this stuff. Um, so I can go find my image, my logo. I can resize it if I want. So let's do it at 600. No, we'll actually see. And it, it won't let you resize higher. Oh. Because it'll be all blurry. That's yeah. Good. So you can't go higher. It just you physically it won't yeah. let you import it. It's like no, bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if I did, for instance, some naughty things to this name, um, see if it's an little exclamation. Oh uh, yeah. So it tells me that on Android, can't do it, that. It's not going to load. It, yeah. It'll let it'll let you import it, but you, you're creating bugs. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, that makes sense. And we've got this little little magic wizard thing here, uh, and it just cleans it for cleans you. Cleans it for you. Yep. I like that. So let's get that image in. So pay attention to these folders just here. So if I do import image. Da -da -da -da. So I've got a yep. this one, got this one, got my MDPI. So you can see they're all getting smaller and they're the right yeah. the right scales. Yeah. So that saves a hell of a lot of time. Did it update the source in there too? It did. Wow. Yeah. So it did the injection. If I hover over that, boom, boom. you can see it. Got it. Now, what does this mean here? So this is so that that we're seeing now. So everything we just saw, our M Fractor, IntelliSense. Yep. This is refactoring this image, and then this says powered by M Fractor Professional. So probably people are like, what does that mean? Yeah. So, right, so maybe cover this now. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So while we're on this, yeah. So we have two two license tiers. We've got Light, which is free for use, got it, and Professional, which uh, gives you everything. Got it. So the only real differences uh, is that Light limits you to two documents per day. Oh, okay. So you can edit, say, your login page and your app.xaml. Oh, okay. But once you go into your main page.xaml, yeah. all the infrastructure features shut off. Okay. Um, that's just because, yeah, it, it, that is what it is. So Got it. Makes sense. It, it, it lets you get a, a preview of the product without purchasing it. Perfect. Makes sense. Yep. And also, if you're just coming in, editing files here and there, then boom, you. Yeah. 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 And this, this suits hobbyists who may be yeah. working on their app three, two, three times a week. Perfect. So it's yeah, it's really really good. Thanks. Nice. All right, what else we got to do? Well, we've got a, a page here, but we have no view model for it. So yeah. we've got got a base view model, mm -hmm. which we which we want to use. Um, What's in the base view model? So in the base view model, we're just doing some basic stuff like yep. our our set property. Looks good. So this is probably pretty similar to what, what you would be using. Mm -hmm. So when we set our property, we want to do this yeah. logic to make I know for property change do its magic. Got it. Um, and importantly. We want our new view models to use a base view model. So this is where our, our configuration system comes ah, in. Okay. So we've got this little shiny file called an app MFC XML. Oh, okay. Um, and I've done some wiring up here already. And I'm saying for the implement view model code action, I want to use base view model, I want it to go into the view models folder and this certain namespace. Oh, so I'm really I'm actually really specifically not only the namespace, but the folder. Yep. For the, and it's for this application, so it's not yes. like global settings for yeah, everything. Just for this application. Oh, that's cool. And a really, really neat thing that we did with this, um, we've been working with the Prism authors. So mm -hmm. when you install a one of these Prism uh, NuGets, it auto loads Prism's config. Oh, interesting. And so it'll automatically uh, align your application to the settings that the Prism authors oh, cool. think you should be doing. Nice. So like you use the Prism base view model, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, we'll eventually get these to other frameworks as well. Oh, very cool. 
So the important reason that I'm showing this stuff is I want to make a new view model for this page. Yeah, login page, and there's no yeah. login view model. There's no login view model. Yeah. So the old way would be I would right-click on view models. Add, add a folder, add a file. It's, 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 it's tedious. Yeah. yeah. A little, little kind of paper cuts, like things that we're just used to repetition, yeah. right? Like yeah. it, it's worked in the past, yeah. but just because it's worked in the past doesn't mean we should keep doing it. Yeah, you, can't, you can always improve it. Yeah. So what I really like about this is I just right click on anywhere in this page. So, mm -hmm. and then I can go to generate. Mm -hmm. And I have this nice shiny generate a new view model for XAML view. Mm -hmm. I can hit that. Oops. And bang. Oh, cool. I have a, I have a login view model. And it's a, you can actually, it's even gone through and collected my data bindings for me. Ah, so automatically my email and yep. my password. Yep. Um, and quite, and also, you notice that I've got these code snippets. Yeah. So it's using my choice of my property setup, basically. Yeah. So in this config file, I have uh, targeted this view model property, ah, code okay. action, yeah. and the snippet. And I've done a bit of a pre setup here. So I've yes, this is probably a hidden feature that people don't know or is in Visual Studio for Mac. No, and I've done a, <laughs> just done a blog post on this because I realized that, I pe love our snippets, that yeah. people just no one knows. people just don't know how to use them. Yeah, it's, so they're, they're probably overly complicated for no reason. Yeah, but they're awesome. Yeah, okay, and then so under this little text, so this text editor yeah. area, you have a area called code snippets. Boom. So here I've set up a, ah. a code snippet for view model property. Got it. Yes. Um, and in my config file, I can target an IDE code snippet Got it. and set it to the name of that. So that's great because now all of my apps can reuse this exact code yep. snippet. And obviously, you are using just the name property and this underscore. But if you're like me, and I look at that code snippet, and I hate the private, and I hate yeah. the underscore, and I want my proper casing yep. lower, I can customize. I can actually set that up to be C Sharp 7, and I can you know, you do, can do whatever what Lambda does. It's how I want it. Yep. Based on maybe if I style cop or I have yep. something, you know, my company is you have to use this, right? Yep. Exactly right. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this this is something that people like asked for a couple of times, yeah. and I was like, oh, just I, I don't know. It seems like hard for me to do, and I'm not sure that it's going to be useful for people. Yeah. Then as soon as we did it, it just changed the entire product. Oh yeah. Like, we had all these really complex code generators that did like all this logic and building syntax. And as soon as we had code snippet support, we probably deleted 10,000 lines of code oh, wow. and replaced it all with templated code snippets. Nice. So it means that anything that generates code in MFractor has a code snippet, oh, nice. our own one, and you can rewire it to your own. So if I don't do this, d when you install MFractor, is there an MFractor in yeah. there that I can edit, or is there those hidden from me? Uh, you, you still have to do this. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's inside the product itself. Oh, okay, got but it. But you need to use a config file to just go, don't, don't use that, please. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. But if I want to use yours, I, I just don't have to do anything. No, it just happens oh, by okay. default. Perfect. So, so what we're really seeing here is this is all optional config. Yeah, it's all Out optional. of the box, mfresh. So I don't want people to think like, oh, i got to edit this XML file. It's like editor config. No, God no. Oh, no God no. no. So this out of the box, you'll get a bunch of stuff. You try to be as smart as possible. Yep. But if you want to, you can put it in here. Yeah. Yes. So okay. up to you. you. If you use it, Great. you'll love it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, so. Got my password and my email. Mm -hmm. Actually, notice that it's even picked the types up. Yeah, so that's I pretty like that. pretty useful. Uh, and you know what? I'm not a fan of the fact that we're using this twice. So this is mm -hmm. basically the same, the same control. Yeah. Uh, that to me is that smells like it, it should be reusable. Oh yeah, you could then put this kind of anywhere. Yeah. Right. So let's do that. Okay. Uh, you could just say make a new folder called controls, a new XAML mm -hmm. uh, content view, and start doing the changes. Yeah, I'm thinking of how I would do it is essentially, it's a little bit tricky because we have some data binding going on. Maybe yep. I want to add data binding for the placeholder text yep. in there. Let's make that a, pro a property I can yeah. set on now the parent control essentially, yeah. right? So, so like, so here technically you've got one, two, like three. a review and probably three bindable properties that you yeah. have to expose. Yeah. So you have the the problem that you have to extract this into a new control. Yeah. And then set up all the bindable property infrastructure. Yep. Um, I've I, I had to do that a few too many times. Yeah. And you can see a trend here. <laughs> yeah. Once I do something a few too many times, um, I I get a bit over it. Yeah. Um, so we've got a, a code action um, where you can just mm -hmm. take this out. How'd you bring that up? What was the oh magic sorry. 
Just is there a right click? Well, there's, so there's a right click. Oh, I like right clicks. Yeah, so I'm right click. Right clicks. And it will be okay. it'll be organized under each category. Oh, okay. However, you can option so option return. Option return. Yep. And okay. that cracks open in practice code action menu. Got it. Okay. Uh, and then I have this nice, sexy action called mm. extract this in, into new XAML control. It sounds like it may take that and extract it into a new XAML control. You're under something. Not yeah. Sure. Is your middle name Sherlock, perhaps? <laughs> so I can click that. And say I want to call this um, labeled entry. Mm -hmm. oh, labeled entry. I've forgotten how to type. And so, ta-da, ta-da. Okay. So it's put into its own controls folder. Oh, nice. It's moved everything into that. It's still preserving the bindings, but for the moment, that's acceptable. Yeah. Uh, done the code behind. So, pretty good. So lovely. Far. It's yep. basically solved for us. Yeah. Um, now, say we wanted to do some data binding. So we wanted to make email a binding to the email entry and the placeholder. We can start going ahead and doing, say, like the label is equal to uh, email, mm. um, the text. So you notice that mFractor is picking up that these don't exist as well? Yeah, those things aren't existing. You yep. see the previewer is very upset at you. I don't, I don't blame it. Yeah, it's like you're adding all this stuff and you haven't recompiled anything. I don't know what's happening. Yep. So now you're setting a label which doesn't exist, text doesn't exist, because mm. it's actually a stack. Uh, yeah. Stack layout inside of there. That's right. Yeah. So th th this has no, no knowledge of these. Yeah. Um, again, you can see a trend happening here. Yeah. I don't like writing bindable properties by hand. I actually don't know how to write a bindable property by hand. It's not I, the easiest thing in the world. I, I, I would be surprised if anyone knows how to <laughs> write a bindable property by hand without Google. Um, so we've got some code actions where you can either option return on that code, code section. Oh, okay. And you can, so you can generate a bindable property. Yep. Um, but I've got three here. Yeah. I don't want to do them one by one. Got it. That, that's not what I'm about, no. James. You do all of them all at once, so I imagine. So I'm going to do them all at once. Ah, okay. So you, you clicked on the control. Yeah. So I've got gone it. onto controls labeled entry. Beautiful. So I'm doing option return. Mm -hmm. I'm doing implement missing members using binary properties. Uh -huh. And then nice. boom, all there. And now, what just happened there, if people didn't see, is Visual Studio for Mac, whenever you kind of add. Yeah. An entry, it'll, it'll essentially, where do you want to place the code? Yeah, I'll tell you what, yeah. I'll, do, I'll do it again because yeah. I did do that pretty quick. Boom. So, option enter, implement missing members using binary properties. Boom. And Visual Studio for Mac jumps in, it's like, hey, where do you want to put this code? Yep. So, it's got here, implement missing members. Yep. And then Boom. it does the insertion for all my. All that fun stuff. Yeah. Yep. And what's cool here as well, I mean, it's a slight bug still at the moment. But it's done a syntax reduction on everything. Uh -huh. So it goes through and inspects and finds all the types. Yeah. And rather than having a full type, it collapses it down just into the type name and oh, makes okay. it using. Yeah. So things are not in control, they're in some view model somewhere else yeah. where they can. Yeah. You know, so add just, it, it does a bit of a, a code cleanup as well when Got you it. do it. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So for the label property and the placeholder property, it couldn't figure out there's a string. So it's just uh -huh. defaulted to object. Okay. But we do have support for, say, Say you want to set, um, like we have a, we may add a new one called placeholder tin. So that would mm. do some kind of behavior. And we want to set it to, I don't know, say red. Yeah, red. It's a, always a great. Yeah, and maybe we, color. maybe we do another one called show placeholder. Mm. Oh, plaque holder. And we want to set that true. Yep. Um, Mfractor's got a bit of smarts here. It'll figure out that red is a color. Mm -hmm. And that true is a boolean. Yeah. So when we go and do implement missing members using binary properties, Oop. Uh, it's ah. it's figured out that you're probably intending on a color. Yeah. And in most cases, it's probably not going to be wrong. Yeah. And the show placeholder will probably be a boolean because you've provided a true true value to Makes it. Makes sense. So that saves quite a bit of time. Yeah. So now we've generated this code behind for that. Label entry, but yep. the label entry still doesn't know about it, right? It doesn't. No, we haven't updated or done anything there. No, well, we probably won't do that today. Yeah, um, we we really know how to do that. Like you'd yeah. make a property change to event and expose some stuff using an X name. Um, inside, the, is mFractor smart enough to tell me my bindable properties inside of there? Like, does it know that reference? Uh, so on here. Yeah, it sure does. Mm. So you can see here that oh, cool. there's a nice little 
window here that says that uh, for placeholder tint, yeah. it's powered by Infractor yeah. Professional. So it's bringing it all in. Yep. So yeah. that's Very that's cool. that's us doing that. Nice. And then let's let's say we wanted to set placeholder tint. Yeah. As soon as I start, I do command space. Ah. This looks a bit, little bit different from the default. It does the default IntelliSense? Um, Circles. That's why. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, f like for a couple of things here, I'll, I'll just go, I'll just go through what we've added. Yeah. So We've got a lot more colors that are in, in there. It's also showing me the bindable properties of the view model. Too, that's right. right. That's pretty cool. So if I yeah. had a bindable color, which you could do. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Why not? Yeah, but there's some cases sure. where you might want to do value conversion on it. That's true. Yeah. As well. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we expose out all the colors nice. available for Xamarin Forms. And so you hover over one, you also get some additional info. I like that. Yep. Hot pink. That's a good. That's yep. One of my favorites. Um, we've got some nice inline code actions for you to use. Mm -hmm. So, if you didn't like any of these particular colors, yeah. I, know, you I want Xamarin Blue. Yeah. yeah, so we can crack open a, a color editor. If there you go. Um, and so that's just from IntelliSense. Nice. So it's pretty yeah. pretty easy. So I'm going to approximate Xamarin Blue, and I apologize. I think for it's 3, 5, B. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I used to know it by heart, actually. Yeah. But it's somewhere in there. So it's some, something yeah. like that. Yeah. A apologies, Xamarin, for butchering, <laughs> butchering your branding. Um, and then you get ah, it. Yeah. Right there. Very so, cool. Yeah. Nice. But then, you know, I actually, I don't know why, oh, I'll leave that as it is. But I want to start changing, like I want to make this label bindable. Yeah. So I can start up a new IntelliSense mm -hmm. uh, suggestion here. And it will suggest to me the email and password. So if I do enter on password, it just inserts the binding expression. Yeah. But I want to make my own. Mm -hmm. So, because it's a different property. Sure, it's a brand new one, yeah. Yeah, so if I, if I press Command Space, so, uh, so sorry, I think it's Control Space. I do it, I do it kind of instinctively, <laughs> so I've forgotten. Yeah, Control Space. Um, I can choose to generate a new property. Yeah, automatically. Yeah, so I just do, boop. boop. And let's say it's password, no, password label. Okay. And if I press Generate, it cracks open the view model. Do the same insertion, and there we go. Oh, got a code snippet. Nice. And if we go back into here, oh, there, it, there is. it is. Yeah, very nice. So easily, kind of going back and forth between yeah. my code when I only when I need to kind of focus on my XAML, clean yep. it all up, and and really be really productive. Yes. Yeah, yeah and that's that's what we're all about making yeah. making people a bit more productive. Yeah, very cool. So, got a couple more things to show you. Sure. What else you got? So we want to make a custom button, right? Yeah. I'm going to say the words, custom renderer. Custom renderer, let's do it. Yep. So, terrifying. They're, they're, eh, they're, not that they're, bad. Like they're, they're a lot of work, let's be honest. <laughs> they can be, yeah. Based yeah. on what you're doing, they definitely could be. Yeah. yeah. But at, 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 a, at a minimum, you have to make your control. Custom control. And then the renderer in Each iOS one. and Android and whatever else you whatever have. Whatever else you got, yeah. So, I had to do this a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And it annoyed me to no end. And a new feature was born. A new feature was born. So I spent, I spent a Saturday just getting this done. <laughs> so if I uncomment that, local it'll... progress button. So local is my custom namespace that yeah. is not imported at all. It looks like no, uh, it is. No, no, it's just the, the control isn't it's progress doesn't button. exist. Yeah. Okay. So if I do, actually, you know what? Let's put it in, for consistency. We'll put it mm. into controls. And now it's not really there at all. Oh no. So no, no, no controls. No progress button. And so I can do option enter. Mm. And I can either make a new XAML one, I can make a new class, or I can choose to make a new view. So oh. that's a Xamarin Forms view. So tap, tap that. Oop. So it's picked view by default. So this is the foundation for making our own custom okay. control. Yeah. Now I want to make a button. button. And if we're going to start making custom renderer here, uh, we'd be going into each of our our projects, so we're making new folder called renderers, yeah, a, a progress button renderer, yeah. so on and so forth. Uh, or if you're using Infractor Professional, so this is a slight difference in the light in the prof in the professional tiers. Sure. C sharp code actions are only in Pro. Okay. I can tap option return. And this brings up the native quick fix menu. And we've got this really nice mm. code action here. It's called uh, generate custom renderers for progress cool. button. Any guesses what it does? I'm assuming that it's going to maybe generate some custom renders yep. for this yep. file. I'm not positive. Yeah, but that's just my assumption. You're on the so, you're yeah. going on the right just track. Just a hint. Yeah. yeah. 
So if I, if I tap that and then oh, cool. do confirm. So if you only needed to do it in iOS, it would only do it in iOS, yeah. for instance, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so we have our, our own code snippers that we kind of built based on some feedback from, from yeah. people. Looks about right. So it's just done everything for you. Yeah, I like that. So Easy peasy. Yeah. And actually added all the export renders, all the types of, yep. which are easy to put in the wrong spot sometimes. Yeah. 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 Which ones wouldn't you? And easy to, to forget. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so we've got a new renderers folder, a new progress button renderer on Android, and also the renderers folder and progress button renderer on iOS. Nice. Beautiful. So it's probably saved a lot of time. Five, 10 minutes. Yeah, we've already at, saved at hours least. of time here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you can type really, really fast. Yeah. 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 Very, very. Yeah. If, I, if I could type really fast, I wouldn't have made the tool. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's probably one of my favorite ones. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Lastly, Style right, Last one. Right, okay. Cool. So Style Sheet support's coming. Yes. So, so CSS. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is something that's even, I think it's in. A nightly or something, it's somewhere right now. It's out there. buried away somewhere. It's somewhere. Yeah. It's happening. But it, it is coming. It's happening. Yep. You don't have to use it, but it's coming. Yeah. Um, yes. So I'm just going to get things into view. So, okay. style sheets. Yes. People don't know. The, Cascading style sheets, CSS, yes. Yeah. In your forms app. So it, There's reasons for this. Yeah. Yeah. And I was skeptical, but I started using it just to play with it. It's pretty cool. And I'm like, I, I like the separation of style from UI. Yeah. Like I like the domain separation. I never necessarily loved, because you can style yeah. controls without this new feature. Yeah. But it's very verbose. Yeah. And it's, it's, I don't mind doing it, but I don't love doing it. Every time like, I, I go and do it, I'm style, like, oh. Style. Sti yeah. Oh, sorry. Resource. You can, yeah, you go into your application resources. You have a resource dictionary. And so then resource dictionary. There's, there's a new feature to add. Um, uh, I actually should already have it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. And then you got to add a style and target type. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, it's not bad. You, you totally do it, right? Yeah. 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 And then by, by so th these are yeah. some MPractor and IntelliSense as yeah. well, doing some suggestions. I'm going to do this entry thing. And the reason you would use these are essentially, I have a blue button, and you don't want to set the background color over and over and over yeah. again. So, so like properties you, background color and. You know, the, the, yeah. the text color that needs to be. That needs to be blue. So not terrible. It, yeah. Let's be honest, though. That's a lot of typing. It's a little typing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, it, it's in it's in XAML. It's it's all good, but I personally like it that, yeah. that, that it's going to be separated. Yeah. So let's take a look. You have stuff for that already. We do. Oh my goodness. So we've um we jumped ahead because we knew <laughs> this was coming. So if I add a resources mm -hmm. element, I'm currently running the night list. Okay. On this one. So if I do open, ooh, ah. so I've got a style sheet suggestion here. Okay. If I press enter, I can get a source suggestion here. Okay. If I press mm. again, it will suggest cascading style sheets okay. or I can generate a new one. So say I want to do like entry style. Yep. Boom. Inserts it. It's done it all for me. Added it in there. Yep. Ah, Added cool. a new one. A little bit of default IntelliSense. Yep. A uh, little margin. Yep. And then if I go back to this, and I decided to delete that, and command space. Ah, it already knows. There we go. And it even gives you a preview. Boom. Of the. Oh, of, of it. The, of right the there. CSS. In yeah. line. So, really cool. Yeah. Jumping ahead, sneak peek. Uh, yeah. On the, yeah. Um, uh, on the edge. Being a bit, being a bit cheeky. Yeah. Yep. The, the forms edge. Yep. Yeah, I like it. But that's cool though, because it's also nice to see that what I like uh, you and your team are working on is not only. You know, current features making things better, but also looking like what are we doing here at Microsoft? What's the next step? How yep. can we uh, be preemptive? So in that version of Forms, or the next version of C Sharp, or the next version of whatever comes, how can we uh, you know, yeah. tweak that up? Yeah, we, we really want to make it as easy as possible. Awesome. Like as soon as possible. Yeah. So now that we know that these features are coming out, we might as well just do it straight away. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Dude, this has been awesome. Yeah. It's been great. Um, you can go to mfractor.com, correct? Still the That's URL? right. That's still the URL. I'll put the link in the show notes. And if anything, just try the, the light version. Check out all these features. That's yeah. the first thing I did. And I've been following in. I'm just like, I'm all in on this thing. It's great. Awesome. Well, Matthew, cool. thanks for coming back on again. Thanks for having me awesome back. Stuff. Absolutely. Well, thanks for everyone for tuning in to this episode of The Xamarin Show. Don't forget to subscribe. You can hit that button down there, up over there. Ding that bell. Make sure you get those notifications right in your inbox each and every week. And until next time, I'm James. 
Thanks for watching.